we are going to work through all of the steps of doing a one-way ANOVA in JASP. There are steps that you need to know for the weekly quiz and later for the unit test. And I'm going to use an example drawn from our textbook. In fact, you will see a similar example in your weekly assignment, but I have changed the numbers. Follow these same steps when you do your ANOVA, but your results will be different. You may not need all of these steps for every example that you do in the homework, but I will include all of the steps that you will need for all of the examples. A marketing major redecorating his dorm room finds four different types of paint advertised as fast drying. To find out whether the advertising matches the hype, he tests five samples of each of the paints, recording how many minutes elapsed until the paint was dry enough to apply a second coat. Use JASP at the 0.05 level of significance to test whether the paints have different drying times. Use a Tukey post hoc test if necessary. We receive our data in an Excel file called Watching Paint Dry. Now already we know that there's a problem because JASP does not open Excel files. And as we look at our data in Excel, we see that they are not properly structured for a one-way ANOVA. So let's fix that. For the one-way ANOVA, just as we did for the independent samples t-test, we need one variable with the scale level data. This is the minutes that it takes for the paint to dry. And a second categorical variable for our groups, in this case, the type of paint. Now, this is a small data set, so we can do this with some cut and paste. When you are done, you will have just two variables. Create a new tab in Excel and copy your data to that second sheet. We can now fix the problem of the Excel formatting. Save as comma delimited. This comma separated values or CSV file will save to the desktop. And this format can be opened in JASP. Now we open up the JASP software. To open up our new CSV, we will go to the main menu, Open Computer Desktop. We'll select the Watching Paint Dry.csv and click Open. And there we find our data. They look like they came in just fine. We have one scale level data and one categorical level data. We are now ready to do our one way ANOVA. We find that in the ANOVA menu under Classical. We click on ANOVA. For our dependent variable, we are going to use the time. These are the number of minutes that it takes for the paint to dry. And our categorical variable is called a fixed factor. We already see there is a significance to this test, 0.01, which is less than 0.05, but there is more information that we need. We're going to grab the descriptive statistics and the estimates of effect size. Our effect size is measured first with an eta squared, looks like an n squared. It's the uh, Greek letter eta. We will also commonly see a partial eta squared reported. Notice that for the one-way ANOVA, the partial eta and the eta squared are exactly the same. So we'll just get the eta squared, but we're going to report it as a partial eta squared. So next we need to do our assumptions checks. The one that we are most concerned with is the homogeneity test. There's our Levine's test. We're looking for values less than 0.05 to indicate that the assumption has been violated. In this case, the assumption has been met. If our test is significant, and in this case it is, we will want to do a post hoc test. The option that we are given by default is Tukey's post hoc test. That's the one that we want to use, although there are many other options depending upon the type of ANOVA that we're using or anything that may be different about our data, such as if the assumption of variances has been violated. 
In this case, two key is really the way we want to go. And we see our post hoc tests showing up right there. One other thing that we want to take a look at is the descriptive plots. We're going to move paint into the horizontal axis. That gives us all four together. Let's get some error bars. And we will see that the names of the paints are all squished together. So grab this handle, stretch that out, give it a moment to reset. Now we can see the names of the paint, we can see their relative means, and we can see the error bars. So we are now ready to put these pieces together and fill out the worksheet, the ANOVA for JASP worksheet, about our findings. Now the first thing you'll find is this F table. It contains all of the findings about the ANOVA that we've just conducted. So for instance, the sum of squares would be 573.75. Now notice that this top row of numbers all relate to the variability between. So this is the sum of squares between, or perhaps the sum of squares treatment, or in this particular case, we might call it the sum of squares paint, or type of paint. The sum of squares within is 644.0. That's also known as the sum of squares error, or the sum of squares residuals. All names for the same things. So let's continue on our variability between row. The degrees of freedom is 3. The degrees of freedom within, 16, are mean square. That is the sum of squares between divided by the degrees of freedom between. It's 191.25. Same thing for the degrees of freedom within. So we have the sum of squares within divided by the degrees of freedom within. The mean square within is 40.25. The totals are the sum of these two numbers, and that is not represented in the JASP results pane. However, we can do that ourselves. 573.75 plus 644. The degrees of freedom, that's easier, 19, got that. And we're not going to use these totals for anything else related to the F ratio. They're just often something that you will see in the F table. All right, so let's go back to our F ratio. Now the F ratio is the mean square between divided by the mean square within. And it is 4.75. We will round it to two decimal places. What is the p-value associated with this F test statistic? It is 0 0.015. We'll take that up to three decimal places. That is how we would complete the F table. So now we're going to look at the rest of these findings and answer the remaining questions on this worksheet. So we need to go to the assumptions checks. Scroll down. The value that we're most interested in at this point is the equality of variances assumptions check that is, is done with a Levine's test. This is testing for homogeneity of variance. If this p-value is less than 0.05, the test is statistically significant. And that means that the assumption of homogeneity of variance has been violated. But this p-value of 0.48 means that it is not below 0 0.05, and now the assumption has been met. So this assumptions check tells us that there is homogeneity of variance between the groups, and that is what we expected and what we would hope would be the case for doing our ANOVA. Next, the appropriate statistic. Well, this is a one-way ANOVA. And that was easy, because that's the test that we're learning right now. Our null and alternative hypothesis. Well, the null hypothesis will be that the mean dry time will be the same for all paints. 
And our alternative hypothesis, this will be easy as well, let's take that null hypothesis and say the mean dry time will not be the same for all paints. So this is a non-directional alternative hypothesis. We're not saying which groups will be different, only that there will be differences somewhere between those groups. Our level of significance. Well, what is our alpha level? We're going to know, we know that the alpha level is 0 0.05. Now, how do we know that? One way is just by convention. We use 0 0.05 for all the tests unless we're told otherwise. However, we're told specifically use JASP at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance. Our degrees of freedom for the treatment, also known as the degrees of freedom between, would be three. And our degrees of freedom error, also known as degrees of freedom within or residuals, is 16. So what is the critical value with 3 and 16 degrees of freedom at the 0 0.05 level? That is not in the results for JASP, so we can use a different tool to find that value. Now this is the statistics multi-tool for ANOVA. This is posted in the class Blackboard site. Now there are different ways that we can go about finding the critical value for 3 and 16 degrees of freedom. One would be to use an F table, which is the last tab. So we look for our degrees of freedom in the numerator, that's the between, so we would go to 3, and then we would go down to 16, this value, 3.239. So one way is to use an F table, but an even easier way, click on critical values, and this takes us to a calculator. At a 0 0.05 alpha level with 3 and 16 degrees of freedom, our critical value is 3.239. 3.239. There's our critical value. What is left? We calculate the statistics. We actually do that F test. The degrees of freedom for this F test are 3. 16, the F value, 4.75, the P value, 0 0.015, and our partial eta squared, it's going to be exactly the same as the eta squared for a one-way ANOVA, so it is a 0 0.47 round that to two decimal places. Well, we now know, because of this p-value being less than 0 0.05, that this test is statistically significant. It means that there are differences among some of the groups. We don't know which ones yet, but we do know that differences exist. So we have rejected the null hypothesis that the dry time is the same, and we have accepted, or we find that the better explanation is the alternative hypothesis. The mean dry time has not been the same. So we'll say, uh, conclude that the mean dry time is not the same for all paints. That is our conclusion. We still want to know which paints are different from which other paints, and we're going to answer that by examining the post hoc test. The post hoc tests give us pairs of comparisons, which I've written out on this row. So our first comparison is between Fast Coat and Hasty Hide. The P sub Tukey value, that is the value for the post hoc, we are looking for values less than 0 0.05 to indicate that these comparisons are honestly significantly different. So comparing the first two types of paint, we have a p-value of 0 0.009. That is, in fact, less than 0 0.05. These comparisons are different. So for my first pair, I'm going to indicate that there is a difference. What about for the second comparison? Fast coat versus quick dry. 
Here the value is a 0.463. That is not significant. I want to say those are the same. For my third comparison, 0.231, those are the same. As I look through the rest of these, I see that in fact, all of them tell me the same thing, that there is no difference in these comparisons. So I've made six comparisons, only one of which is statistically significantly different. So what does that mean? Let's look at our graph and get a good sense for what this is telling us. The first paint and the second paint are different in their dry time. This next part is kind of unfulfilling because we'd like for these two groups to be, I don't know, different than the others, except what we're really finding is the, the third and fourth paint are the same in their dry time. And if you were comparing it to the second paint, they'd be about the same in their dry time. However, if you were comparing it with the first paint, they also would be about the same in their dry time. The only time that you would really notice a difference is when you compare the first and the second paint for their dry time. That is how we would fill out this worksheet for our ANOVA, and then you would when you are ready, click on the weekly assignment. We could fill in the information on the weekly assignment with the information that you have written down all in the same place here on this worksheet. And that is what we need to know in order to do our one-way ANOVA with JASP. <laughs>